Hello, my name is uh, Mark Meshack. I'm a captain with Wichita Fire Department, Wichita, Kansas. Uh, we're a metropolitan fire department that services the city of Wichita, which is about 391,000 people. Uh, we have approximately 600,000 people in the metro area in Cedric County that we respond to. We're here today taking delivery of Rescue One. This is actually kind of a twin to another rescue we have in the city of Wichita. Uh, both of these companies provide structural fire ground support on our fire calls as well as their specialty disciplines. So Rescue Two, the sister to this rig, is our hazardous materials response team. Rescue One is our technical rescue team that provides all of our swift water, high angle, collapse, trench, those types of responses. Both teams are cross-trained so they can support each other and act in redundancy if one of the units happens to be tied up on alarm. So we have some redundancy in our system as well. So, so we chose to go with the Cummins uh, X-15 engine, 605 horsepower. Since this unit is a regional asset or could be deployed regionally, we actually did go above the NFPA requirement on the speed limit and allow it to travel at 75 miles an hour. We do have quite a few highways in the city. Um, and again, since it responds regionally, uh, that was one exemption we changed on the drivetrain since this particular unit responds much more regionally than most of our other units. So just kind of going around the truck, um, it's a two-door cab. We chose a two-door cab and a walk-in body for a couple of reasons. One of the big focuses was, again, we work in an urban area, and so keeping the overall length of the apparatus short uh, was a priority for us. And since we were always going to have a walk-in body, we didn't see the need to have a redundancy of having jump seats for firefighters to ride back here just to get back into the walk-in body. So we selected a two-door velocity cab with Cummins drivetrain. Um, first compartment driver's side, this is a Stokes compartment. So in this compartment, we have two Stokes storage as well as a slide-out tool tray. Uh, you can see here it's pegboard, so we have the ability to mount long tools for both the driver or officer either side of the rig. So this way, if they want the driver or the officer come off the rig and want to grab a six-foot hook or a set of irons or something like that, we have storage in both this, this lower shelf to accommodate both of those. This second compartment is configured for the driver's gear. So we've allocated space down low for like the firefighter's turnout pants if he's not wearing them while operating the apparatus. Up here, you can see there's a pegboard so we can mount the SCBA, a place for some smaller hand tools, things like that. Uh, so the driver can again, kind of go to one compartment on a structural fire response, get everything they need. Uh, the other side of this compartment is configured for the driver's rescue kits. So um, we look at, you know, individual devices for, or equipment for swift water, suits, things like that. That's what all these cubbies are for. So all their hotshot kits can be right here. So basically, the driver has a single service compartment for all their personal protective equipment so that any deployment they respond to, they get off the rig, they go one place, they don't have to open multiple compartment doors. So moving a little bit farther back, um, this particular compartment is going to carry our torch system as well as have slide out trays for our heavy chains and rigging and our gray paratech struts. So we mounted them so, and, and made sure that the distances were all correct so we can vertically stand those gray struts up and again, slide these out for quick deployment. And, and this one is just additional rigging storage. There's not a whole lot of customization in this compartment, um, but it does give us the ability to store some of the additional chain and rigging equipment and some of the associated materials with the strut system. Both sides of the apparatus have receiver points that are winch powered as well. And if you look along the side of the body, we have multiple 3,000 pole anchor points. Uh, this is triangulated at 60 degrees with those two anchors. So when they're using their bipod, they can basically set up the Paratech off of this and get a three directional or 60 degree pole to triangulate the load. So it gives them a little bit more options when deploying that system. It also has some additional storage, uh, bottle storage, but we have portable winch points on all side of the rig. So we have this here, we have it off the officer side, the, re, the at back of the apparatus, the front of the apparatus, even though the front has a fixed winch as well. This compartment has our bag system. And the one nice thing I will say about Pierce is basically we gave them the inventory of the bags and you guys did the legwork of calculating what the most efficient way is gonna be storing for us. So uh, we gave you a list 
and the engineers sat down and figured out what was the best way we could put these bags in, quick deployment, and minimize how much footprint it takes of the compartment space. So we were very, very pleased with that. Rearmost compartment on the driver's side. Um, we will, we have it, uh, it will be installed by our shop, but we're using a Fire Marine Lazy Susan for our hydraulics, as well as uh, plotting some space to put a portable hydraulic unit. We have air and electric out of this compartment as well, but this will be primarily our extrication compartment, if you will, as far as uh, all of our jaws and hydraulic tools out of here. Okay, so off the rear, we have uh, two compartments that open off the back. Um, these compartments actually extend into the interior body. They're actually tall compartments. This is designed so we can put our Paratech Gold struts in. So even though the clear door opening doesn't fit the strut, you can just slide the strut in and we'll put the mounts on that pegboard so we can store these and deploy them off the back so they're not laying horizontally somewhere else on the rig. So another thing we did was we have fixed 9,000 pound straight line pole anchors off the front and the back of the apparatus. So both the front and rear don't use the 3,000 pound swivel, they're 9,000 pound straight line pole. And again, we have the receiver hitch off the rear. We can triangulate that if we wanted to with our bipod, um, but it just gives us further options. And since that's in line with the chassis, in, in theory, if we had to do a 9,000 pound straight line off a single anchor, we have that ability to do so. This does have ground ladder storage for a 28 foot extension ladder and a 60 foot roofer. Um, again, on the interior, um, again, we have a large area here. There, it isn't installed yet, but we have a tray that will be mounted with a one inch lip. This gives us the ability to put some long tool storage as well as you know, a couple pressurized extinguishers, a set of irons, things like that. So the firefighters that are riding back here, when they arrive on scene, they can grab their tools as they're exiting the apparatus. So again, we try to minimize how often we have to access compartment spaces, especially on our bread and butter runs. And since most of the responses that this will go to will be structure fires, we want that equipment to be readily accessible and easy to deploy. So that's one thing that will be going here and that's why this is so bare for so long. Um, we do have four fixed riding positions in the back of the apparatus here. So um, we can basically have uh, typical staffing on this apparatus is a absolute minimum of three. Typically it rides with four though. Um, and so you can see we have SCBA mounts. So again, these guys can uh, come off the rig and quickly deploy. We will also use one of these brackets or make a couple adjustments to it. So we do employ a hotshot diver system in our department. So as an example, if we had somebody in the water and had to have an immediate diver deployment, we will take one of these brackets and put a BA or a breathing apparatus system on it. So one of our divers could, you know, theoretically could get dressed in route as we arrive on scene, grab the BA and immediately go in. So we're ready to deploy a hotshot diver. So one thing we did do on this though, is we use a hose restraint system or a netting system like this on our pumpers where it's single pull. So rather than going and undoing individual straps, you can just come in and single pull and the netting drops. So we prefer that style because again, uh, when you're in a hurry, you want to be able to grab gear, you can just drop this, it hangs down. We're not actually sitting here and messing with individual retention straps. So again, that was something we've done on our engine companies for the hose bed, and that was something that Pierce was kind enough to accommodate on this rig for the interior storage as well. So um, other, it does have a 110 powered AC unit in the front as well, if we're on a long time uh, scene time, but we also did put a 12 volt unit because uh, again, most of the responses these individuals go to, they're gonna respond to a structure fire and then deploy. So we, uh, having a redundant 12 volt AC and heating system was uh, important to us so that they don't have to run the generator, have climate control back here. So, so one th other thing we did on this, again, because we didn't want firefighters to arrive on scene since um, you know, there'll be firefighters riding back here and in the cab. Uh, we did put do not exit lights and okay to exit lights based in their interlock with the parking brake system. So that way apparatus pulls up on scene uh, parking brake's not set. We don't have a bunch of firefighters getting out of their seats and starting to try to deploy. So we did put these on here. We also did, you'll see them hanging off the ceiling, incorporate a wireless inter, uh, intercom system, a headset system. And we did that for a couple of reasons. We have a redundant voice intercom that doesn't require headsets where guys can communicate to the cab and to the back. At the same time, we have the headsets just so that you have a little bit more clarity of communication 
The other thing the headsets gives us the opportunities to do is when we're working around the rig, like if we're using the Paratech system and putting out struts and, and deploying the bipod and things like that, we have range with these headsets, so we can actually have firefighters working around the outside of the apparatus and have clear communications irrespective of the environment they're working in. So, so one other thing about the top of the apparatus, you can barely see there's a roller system on the back of it, um, and there's anchors along the roof of this apparatus. Um, we get quite a bit of severe weather in Kansas, and so this gives our team the ability to take one of their inflatable Avon boats, and they can actually secure it to this rig and put it up on the roof and tie it down on the roof so that basically we have the ability to deploy multiple boat assets. We can have our boat trailer with the engine company that's co-quartered with this, as well as this rig carrying its own inflatable boat on the roof. So again, it gives us the ability when we get high call volumes with lots of rain, flooding, things like that, or severe weather, that we have multiple boat assets within this singular company that we can deploy. Is uh, our dive compartment, if you will. Uh, it's got two slide out trays to where we can put breathing apparatus on it. So this will carry four breathing apparatus on these slide outs, as well as the, the breathing apparatus in the back of the body for the hotshot divers. So um, just gives us the ability, if you will, to, to quickly deploy our breathing apparatus on any dive responses that we may do. Because again, we do have a full dive team as part of this company. So this compartment um, actually is our confined space and USAR compartment. So our air cart will go here, all of our sling packs, reels, hoses, everything that is associated with confined space responses uh, goes into this compartment, and that's where all the compartmentation has been made to accommodate supporting that role. Um, this compartment is kind of a mirror to the driver's side, only for the officer. So again, we have an area for the, the officer's turnout gear to go, and then individual shelving for his different kits and, and get-ups for whether he's diving, whatever, his individual PPE. So again, the officer has a one-stop shop. If they go to response, they come here. This will have all the different associated PPE that they may need, depending on the type of response they're going to. And then this is the Stoke storage. And as we talked about, again, we have uh, multiple receivers for uh, different setting up with our bipod system, our Paratech system. Um, this does have not only a portable winch um, and power points on all sides, but we do have a fixed 15,000 pound winch off the front as well. So any heavy winching that we would do, we could utilize this system, and then we could use the smaller 10,000 pound portable winch on any of the uh, anchoring points around the apparatus. So, um, and again, we have the straight line pole anchors that may be difficult to see off the front of the body as well, and they're triangulated as well off of that center receiver point. So it uh, just gives us multiple rigging options. We do have a small storage compartment for any of our winch support gear to go in here. Uh, again, just to make it easy so we don't have firefighters having to go to multiple compartments if they're just doing a quick winch pull on that. So, okay. well, yeah, thanks for taking the time and going over the rig with us. We're very excited to get this in service. And I know our company's back home or as well.